Hello, welcome to Ray Recommends. My name is Raymond Antribus. I'm here with none other than my sister, Karina Antribus. She runs a feminist film festival called the Bechel Test. Karina. Bechel Test Fest. Bechel Test Fest. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> you fell at the first hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> she runs the Bechel Test Fest. Karina, what can you tell us about the Bechel Test Fest? Um, so the Bechel Test Fest is a was a year long festival. Oh, right. Yeah. And now it's an ongoing celebration of films that pass the Bechtel test. Do you know what the Bechtel test is? I do, but they probably don't. <laughs> um, so the Bechtel test is basically a very simple, very low bar measure that is applied to any film, um, which says if a film has two women in it, they have a conversation with each other about something other than a man. Mm -hmm. Simple. Um, and it was the reason why it was a year long festival last year is because it was the 30th anniversary of it. And um, it was created by Alison Bechtel, who is a US um, a cartoonist. Yeah. And it was inspired by a cartoon that she did, which had two women going on a date together. And one of them says to the other one, oh, let's go for a date. Um, let's go to the cinema. And the other one says, well, thing is, I only go to the cinema if it passes this rule. And then she said, oh, the rule is it has to have two women in it to have a conversation about something other than a man. Anyway, somebody saw this comic and since then it was just like, ah, actually that's an interesting concept. How many films actually do pass this rule? And then it was coined after Alison Bechtel. Bechtel Tess was born 30 years ago and yeah, so yeah. But launched last year, did really well. Those people came along and um, everyone was just like, oh, you know, what are you going to do after the year? And just thought we'd carry on. I thought that um, it'd be really good to talk to you about feminism. So like as... I mean, obviously, we're siblings, we're raised by the same woman, and, you know, our mum, I think it's pretty fair to say that she's a feminist, and she kind of instilled those, <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty, old, I mean, this is her house, and you can see, I mean, like, this yeah. is just, this isn't stage, this is all just mum. Um, where, where do you feel like your feminist ideas and mum's feminist ideas, where, where would they depart? Well, if at all? Um, I mean not that far from each other. I mean, yeah. the, the crux of feminism is just to believe in e equal rights and wanting the same benefits as men get. And uh, But I have to take into appreciation her error and I'm sure she takes into appreciation my error. Um, I mean, I can't think of many things that she, like right now, that she wouldn't necessarily, that I might, it's part of my feminism that she wouldn't believe in and vice versa. But I mean, she was, at a different time. Any woman 30 years ago having kids would have had different things to contend against. And I feel quite lucky that we are quite progressed. We still have a long way to go, but we're quite progressed at this point. So, you know, I live in a country, in a city, where things like abortion is okay, and it happens, and um, legal. Um, I don't have to go down any back street alleys or do something that's going to potentially ruin my own health. I can vote. I can work for a media company that and assume that I get the right pay. Mm -hmm. And and these are things that would have been harder to deal with. Oh, and, and also like, well, I guess we're talking about interracial relationships as well. I think her as having a um, relationship with a black man would have been more difficult for her back then as well. Yeah. Um, the expectations were different. Yeah. I don't feel I have as many expectations as say she would have. So uh, the fact that I'm not married or have kids as well, that's not that much of a big deal. And mm. there's plenty of us out there that mm. aren't married, don't have the expectation to get married so much anymore. And that's that's quite liberating. Mm. But yeah, I mean, mum and I, we chime pretty much on most things in terms of making, you know, wanting, wanting our lives as women to be as equal as possible and safe as possible and enjoyable as possible mm. I guess. I read this, um, no I didn't read it, it's online, there's an interview with uh, the author Junot Diaz, love Junot Diaz, and a interviewer asked him do you consider yourself a feminist and his answer was great, he said I do not consider myself a feminist per se, I consider myself a feminist ally because my body as a man is not in the ring, you know, mm. I really like that so and I feel like for me, 
as your brother, I feel like a lot of my ways into ideas of feminism have come from you, have come from having an older sister who's, you know, would be sitting around at a table and you'd be like, this guy, this thing happened on the train or the bus or in the street and I'm just like, wow, for real. You know, that's completely a different world. So that kind of gave me an, an, an insight. Is there a way for me to be a feminist? Like, do you consider the yeah. men to be a feminist without, you know, or is it important to say no, a feminist ally? I don't, I mean, I think, I think what, I think that statement um, does have some truth to it. Yes, you can have sympathy and compassion, and I genuinely believe that you do have sympathy and compassion for women and the struggles that we face, but ultimately you will never know what it's like. So I think that's what he's trying to do mm. in a very PC, respectful way. Mm. And it's, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with that at all, but I similarly don't have any objections to men saying I'm a feminist, and I encourage it. And, you know, it's not, I think feminism is about, you've got, it's not about saying me and you, us and them. It's about joining a movement together to make sure that we, as one half of the human race, are treated with the utmost respect mm. and are able to go through life in the best way possible mm. with the same opportunities and the same safety and treatment. Again, as your younger brother, what do you think you learned from me, I guess, about men and, and, and mas masculinity? And how did, does that shape your ideas of feminism? Yeah, I mean, I think we're both quite lucky to have a, a sibling that is the opposite gender. Um, True. Because, and, and just like witnessing you growing up and your treatment and respect and understanding of women as you grow up has changed so much over the, over the decades. And at times, you know, when you're still sort of when you were younger trying to navigate those relationships between women when they're just so alien and so weird and yeah. the same with me like yeah. I, it's not like I've clocked men yet but like mm -hmm. I still um I, I, when you're growing up and you're like the opposites the opposite sex is yeah. completely alien you're like yeah, oh my yeah. god what's going on but wisdom I guess as you get older you're just like you know what there's there's things that men do that women do and the things that women do that men do but I'm trying, I'm trying to ask you a question really. Well, so, I mean okay I mean as an example that's something one of the things that I remember was when I was going to secondary school and you said this to mum and then mum said it to me you said to mum apparently make sure he doesn't go to a school in Hackney because as a boy there's some stuff that would probably be best to keep him away from. And mum took that advice and she campaigned to get me into schools that were outside of Hackney. I mean, I went, you know, obviously right. my first school was in Hackney. But as I got older, you know, and that's coming from your wisdom. Yeah, I guess, I mean, Hackney was a different time back then. And yeah. I was witnessing uh, men being the more aggressive part of masculinity and having gangs and going down bad routes even though I could tell some of the guys were it wasn't in their heart they weren't naturally like that yeah, they yeah, were just yeah. going up this um, bad well down this bad stream um, and I guess just like me knowing you you're not a bad person you haven't got it in your blood to go around and like mug people and things like that so uh, but you have the ability, like most people have the ability to be influential, so I didn't want you to be going down a path because of what you felt you needed to do to fit in, which I guess we all just want to fit in, we yeah. want to belong, yeah. and that's where the wrong crowd yeah, yeah, term yeah. comes from. But yeah, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 no more. I mean, but I mean, Stoke Newington was a good school. Out of all, I went. My mum sent me to school to Stoke Newington because it was the only school in Hackney at that time that was. It didn't have a uniform, didn't have a religion, and it was mixed. Hmm. So mum, being her, she wanted to make sure that I wasn't anywhere with as little restrictions as possible. And you know, a girls' school or a boys' school, if that's not that's not real world, there are men out there who can't yeah, just yeah, yeah. ring fence one gender and say, you know, you're not allowed to go and talk to boys or whatever. Um, and we're not religious and uh, the uniform thing of just expressing yourself through your own clothes was 
an important part of growing up for me. Especially because I <laughs> kind of got teased for some of the clothes I wore because oh, of being a bit of a hippie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah me too, Mom. <laughs> Went to school in the super girl outfit hair? once. Don't talk to me about hair. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different <laughs> podcast. Yeah. It's quite amazing that something like Vetro Test Fest took so long to come along that it doesn't already exist. Well, this is it. As I was creating it, I kind of was... I mean, you must get it when you have ideas and you're like, okay, well, somebody must have thought of this yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How do I release this without somebody else nabbing it and taking it for themselves? But um, I, I came up with the idea started working on like the logos and the um, branding and the mission statement and the website and all that kind of stuff and then eventually I realised I had to start talking about it and letting it out to the world. Mm. So that concern of being like, okay, now people know about it, even little things like getting the um, domain and getting the um, Twitter handle and the Facebook page before anyone else did. But I, I mean, it's a gamble, isn't it? You, mm. just, you just do what you do. And then, but yeah, it's great. When, I, when it launched, so many people were like, why didn't anyone think of that? I was like, yeah, why didn't they? But this is, this is it, so many people would have. Mm. I can't claim to be the only person that would think, here's a good idea for a film festival. Mm. But you kind of have to give yourself credit as like, yeah, but you made it happen. Mm. All these ideas are out there, but the person that makes it happen, that's the one that... Could you, you also, you do um, panels, uh, you screen a film, you do panels. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed that about you. The events. I always find that that uh, yeah, that's up the crux layer. of what we do because the Bettel test is about conversation, mm. about two women having a conversation, yeah, yeah. Um, and the fact that the concept itself is flawed. Like, it's 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 a bit silly, isn't it? Like the fact that just because it passes the Bettel test, it does not mean it's a good film. It does not mean it's a feminist film mm. whatsoever, and. So many people, like, when I discovered the Bechtel test as itself, I was looking and researching and so many different opinions came across it and so many people were like, oh, but, you know, basically picking it apart. But I liked that element of it. I liked the fact that so many people could dispute it, agree with it, nuance it, and that I enjoyed. And I was like, okay, Bechtel test causes conversation. I love film and talking about film. Mm. Let's merge this and we'll put on screenings. We'll have a conversation in any element, in any any way possible. So we have, we have a introduction or a post screening panel. Um, we also look at the ways of invite inviting the audience to get involved as much as possible, making them feel comfortable. Yeah. And this is what I've been doing a lot of work towards the latter part of last year trying to encourage women in particular to contribute to the conversations because I go to a lot of film screenings, a lot of Q&As and like it does seem to be women are the last people, they, like, they, they'll they hold their question until the last five minutes of it or something and then mm. when they're saying oh has anyone got any questions, it's only at that last minute, then the women come up um, and even in those spaces men tend to dominate the Q&As so again what we're trying to do here is give women a space to contribute and make their opinion feel valid and try and stop women going, I don't know if this is the right answer or, you know, the, the kind mm. of just have, give them a space to feel confident in their, mm. their answers and their, their, their opinions. Mm. Um, and that, that's really important to me as well. I'm, I'm the same. Yeah. I'm always just like, oh, <laughs> what I'm going to say sounds really stupid, but it's like, why? I mean, I, you know, we're all entitled to an opinion. We've all watched something and experienced something together. How has it made you feel? It's not a right or wrong answer. And you've had um, a few poets on your panel. You know, you had Bridget Minamore. Yeah. What is it that you feel like the poet's gaze, or particularly the, the female poet's gaze, can contribute to that? Is there something um, that made you think, right, as well as the filmmakers and the actors uh, and the film critics, I want to engage with the poets as well? Like. Well, there I mean, there's, there's poetry in film. Good film has poetry. Um, and I guess it's just any artist's critical mind of absorbing art and then deconstructing it in their poetic or artistic brain. And that's something that adds a really interesting dynamic to the conversations in particular. So tell us about the next Spectro Test Fest that you've got coming up next event. 
the next event, we've got um, Drop Dead Gorgeous said at the Prince Charles Cinema yeah. on the 21st and it's in partnership with the Loco Film Festival, which cool. is the comedy film festival. Awesome. Um, and then in May, we have a Nora Ephron weekender. So we're going to be celebrating the work of the writer um, Nora Ephron. Um, and that's at the Rio Cinema in Hackney. Blah, blah, blah. Home first, turf. Yeah, yeah, I'm really pleased actually because the Rio Cinema is where I went. My first ever cinema experience, and it's the Rio, and I don't want to, you know, support it and make sure it's still around. And then we've got some other exciting stuff coming up for the rest of the, rest of the year. Thelma and Louise um, anniversary screening at the Prince Charles, and there's a really exciting thing that I'm not going to talk about just yet, but that'll be later on in the year. So um, watch this space. Cool. Well, hopefully, that interview passed the Betro test. Well, no, it didn't, did it? No, it didn't, no, it didn't. Because <laughs> you're not a woman. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> but, here we go. This, you can hold this up and, and say that that's, a, that's the logo. So there you well, go. hopefully, this interview passed the bet, Joe, to, I mean, um, yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, thank you very much for speaking with us. Good luck with the Bet Show Test Fest. I will be there. Obviously, you're my sister, so I love you. Uh, <laughs> Ray recommend.